Now, Blurred History Month is really every month for us. True, true. And while we love these shows and movies all year round, we're sharing some of our favorites here today. Let's start with maybe the greatest movie rebellion of 2018. Don't at me, but John Boyega's taking over the sequel Pacific Rim, I'm here for it. More giant robots, more pilots, but mainly more Boyega. Yes. Please. Well, you know and I know the movie literally wouldn't exist but for him. Yeah, that's true. I mean, a lot of people don't realize that he's a double duty on this as both an actor and a producer. He has this way of playing himself in everything he does. From this to Star Wars to Attack the Block, he's always just really relatable. We have tons of love for Boyega and could go on forever, but we've got to give love to some sheroes on this side of the pond too. Sonequa Martin-Green has quickly become a genre icon. Most people know her from her role as Sasha on The Walking Dead, which was in 2012. She actually auditioned for Michonne. I didn't realize that. But when Denai Guerrero landed that part, the showrunner created the role of Sasha specifically for her. And you know what? The most interesting thing about the role of Sasha is how they approached PTSD in the show. When the crew finally makes it to safety in Alexandria, she is completely rejecting this whole idea of living a normal life behind the walls of the neighborhood, but is also still down for the cause, literally to the very end. Well, by end, we mean before she left the show to go start a war with the Klingons. I am seriously loving her on Star Trek Discovery right now. Her story arc has been like no other Star Trek to date, from inadvertently starting a war to helping design a spore drive, and then from the mirror universe and back? It sounds like she's heading for a leadership position. Maybe Starfleet captain? Why do you think that hasn't happened yet? Well, you know, they kind of started her storyline by sending her to jail, and I got a lot of feels about that. Still not a captain. I'm also very conflicted, too, because I love Chris Pike, but I really need a black woman in charge. No shade, Saru. Yeah, and there's a lot of questions about where this fits into the larger Star Trek timeline, because I'm confused. The showrunners keep promising that the shifts will make sense eventually. But we don't even know if there's a shift in the timeline. Wherever this leads, I need Sonequa to be captain. Well, as they say, Nichelle Nichols had to hail all frequencies so that Sonequa Martin-Green could fly. That is definitely not the quote, but I'm picking up what you're putting down. Now, let's bring it back down to Earth and then another six feet under. I'm talking about Tales from the Crypt, Demon Knight. Yes, Jada, yes. She really loves this movie. Thanks to director Ernest Dickerson's determination to have Jada Pickett-Smith play Geraldine, we get our first black final girl. Okay, Anjali, I, everybody knows I'm not really a horror fan, so what's a, what's a final girl? So, final girl is kind of a trope, but go with me here. It refers to the last girl or woman alive to confront the killer, in this case, the demon, played by Billy Zane. The assumption is that the final girl is the only one left to tell the story. She is literally the final girl. Okay, I get it. Like, she actually becomes the demon knight in this movie who is now protecting the blood of Christ and in turn preventing demons from bringing eternal darkness. And she started the film off as a convict on work release. But real talk, I have a problem with that. Okay, look, both of these characters are obviously problematic. We have two women who start off as convicts. Star Trek, get at me. But they both go to jail. And yes, these are problematic, but we still have to love them for the fact that they're badass black women characters who beat the baddie. And they live. When I first saw this movie, I definitely thought she was gonna die. Same, same. And at the same time, the reviews actually weren't great, but it's such a fun watch. It really is. And now it's become a cult classic in its own right, mainly because of Jada. Jada's also not a stranger to genre, from Matrix to Gotham. Yes, Fish Mooney is a boss. Did you know that they created Fish Mooney for Gotham? She was never in the comics. In fact, her character was based on Queen Bee, an infamous mafia don of Harlem. Geraldine, Niobe, Fish Mooney, I love all of Jada's characters, but what's your favorite? I think mine's Niobe. I mean, my favorite scene from Major Revolutions is when she's piloting the hammer, not her ship, through the ducks, and Morpheus just can't even keep up as co-pilot. What about you? I gotta say Fish Mooney, from the clothes to the hair to losing an eye and still being a badass, she's everything. Oh my god, wait, I just made this connection. Jada started in a different world 
with Cree Summer, who is another black genre queen. Yo, we can't not talk about the queen mother of all animation, Cree Summer. <laughs> oh, how we love thee. Let us count the ways. We got Inspector Gadget, Transformers, The Spectacular Spider Man, Batman Beyond, Danny Phantom, Codename Kids Next Door, Rugrats, The Incredible Hawk, Guardians of the Galaxy, Voltron, Legendary Defenders. Basically, if you've watched a cartoon in the last 25 years, you've heard her voice. And I love her voice. Hi, my name's Susie. What's yours? She's an icon. There are so many equally iconic and amazing black characters in genre. So let us know some of your favorites in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell so you don't miss any Sci-Fi Wire updates.